The expansive fields of Nebraska stretched wide under the night sky, a patchwork of earth tones under a cloak of darkness, interrupted only by the occasional lonely lamp of a farmhouse. Tom Riggs, a solitary farmer with a weathered face and calloused hands, was accustomed to the stillness, finding comfort in the predictable sounds of chirping crickets and rustling leaves. But tonight, the tranquility was shattered by a brilliant streak of light tearing across the heavens. Tom, having spent years in the Marines before retiring to his family farm, was no stranger to unexpected events, yet nothing could have prepared him for what happened next. A fiery meteorite, blazing with an incandescent fury, plummeted towards Earth, crashing into his west field with the force of a bomb blast. The ground shook, windows rattled, and the night air was filled with the acrid scent of ozone and burning metal. Driven by a mix of concern and curiosity, Tom grabbed his flashlight and old shotgun, heading out into the darkness. The crash site was easy to locate, marked by a smoldering crater that glowed eerily in the moonlight. As he approached, the heat was intense, the air shimmering above the twisted wreckage of what was clearly no mere rock, but the remains of a metallic craft unlike anything on Earth. Within the wreckage, obscured by shadows and debris, Tom heard faint groans. Shifting a twisted sheet of metal with caution, he uncovered two small figures, unconscious but breathing. They were unlike any children he had ever seen. Their skin shimmered with an iridescent quality, reflecting the moonlight in hues of silver and blue. It was immediately apparent they were not of this world. Despite his initial shock, Tom's instincts kicked in. He carefully lifted both children, surprised by their lightness, and carried them back to his farmhouse. As he settled them on the sofa, covering them with a blanket, he noticed their breathing stabilize. It seemed his unexpected guests were merely stunned, not gravely injured. Tom watched over them through the night, their chests rising and falling evenly in the dim light of his living room. As dawn broke, painting the room with strokes of orange and pink, the alien brothers stirred. Their eyes opened, revealing irises that danced with starlight, adjusting with confusion and fear to the unfamiliar surroundings. The eldest of the two, who introduced himself as Dax through hesitant broken English, looked up at Tom with a mix of awe and apprehension. His younger brother Joral clung to him, wide-eyed and silent. Tom offered them water and a gentle smile, trying to convey safety despite the barrier of language and species. Y you are... Tom? Dax's voice was tentative, testing out the words. Yes, Tom Riggs, and you're safe here, Tom replied, his voice a low, calming rumble. Tom's farmhouse, typically a sanctuary of solitude, became a bustling hub of activity and adaptation in the weeks following the arrival of Dax and Jarrell. The brothers, still grappling with the shock of their crash and the loss of everything familiar, found themselves in a world that was as alien to them as they were to it. Their initial fear of Tom slowly gave way to a cautious trust as they came to understand his intentions were kind. The adjustment was not without challenges. Earth's environment was harsher and more variable than the temperate climate of Lithor. The brothers struggled with the cold, often finding refuge by the fireplace, mesmerized by the flames, a phenomenon not seen on their planet, where heat was provided by bioluminescent flora. Tom, for his part, was a practical man, not given to overt displays of warmth. Yet, seeing the brothers shiver through their first earthly winter, he fetched some old clothes his nephew had outgrown and adjusted them to fit the slight figures of his new wards. He watched, bemused, as Dax and Jarrell explored the textures of denim and wool, their faces lighting up with curiosity. Food was another hurdle. The staples of a human diet were alien to their systems. Tom experimented with various dishes, finally finding success with simple meals rich in vegetables and grains, which the brothers could digest easily. They showed their gratitude by helping with chores around the farm, learning to feed the chickens and milk the cows, their nimble fingers surprisingly adept at the tasks. Communication improved dramatically once Tom dusted off an old laptop and used translation software to bridge their language gap. The brothers were quick learners, their intellect clearly advanced, and they soon began speaking English with increasing confidence. During the long winter evenings, they shared stories of Lithor, describing its vast oceans and bright skies, which helped Tom understand their sense of loss. Dax, the more outgoing of the two, took an interest in Earth's technology, while Jarrell, quieter and more introspective, found solace in drawing and painting. 
capturing scenes of their lost home and new experiences on canvas. Tom found himself growing fond of the brothers, their resilience and ingenuity reminding him of his own children, long moved away. As the brothers adapted, so did Tom. The farmhouse gradually became a home to their laughter and the peculiar but pleasant sounds of Lithorian music, which Dax managed to emulate on an old synthesizer. Despite the vast differences between their species, a familial bond was forming, built on shared meals, mutual assistance, and the deep human and Lithorian need for connection. The winter thawed into spring, and with it the ice around their hearts melted a bit more. Dax and Jurel began to see Tom not just as a guardian, but as a mentor, and perhaps a figure of paternal significance. The farm no longer felt like a place of exile. It became a sanctuary, a place where they could heal and perhaps, one day, thrive. In the quiet unfolding of daily life, Tom, Dax, and Jarrell learned that family isn't defined by origins or biology, but by the bonds of love and loyalty that can form even under the most unlikely circumstances. As spring painted the Nebraska landscape in vibrant shades of green, a subtle shift occurred in the dynamic of the farmhouse. Tom, Dax, and Jarrell had settled into a comfortable routine, and their evening talks had become an eagerly anticipated event. These sessions were not just linguistic exercises, but a time for sharing, understanding, and laughter. It was during one of these evenings, as they sat around the kitchen table with maps of Earth spread out, that Dax suddenly pointed to a picture of the Hubble Space Telescope on Tom's old laptop. Lithor, we watch stars like you, Dax explained, his voice tinged with excitement. Our etherscope, much like Hubble, but sees deeper. Tom, intrigued, leaned forward. You guys have your own space telescopes? You were watching us? Jarrell nodded, his shyness momentarily forgotten. Not watching, studying stars, galaxies, learning. Lithorians love learning. This revelation opened a new door for Tom. He had not fully grasped the level of technological advancement the brothers' civilization possessed. The next day, he brought home books from the local library on astronomy and space technology, turning their learning sessions into deep, engaging discussions about the universe. Their breakthrough in communication allowed Tom to delve deeper into understanding the brothers' journey to Earth. Dax, with his newly polished English, explained how their ship was a research vessel, meant for observation, and accidentally caught in a cosmic storm that sent them crashing to Earth. Tom listened both fascinated and heartbroken, as the brothers described their parents, who were scientists, and their mission to observe developing civilizations discreetly. It was a mission of peace and knowledge, tragically cut short. Seeing their pain, Tom shared his own stories of loss, how he had served in the military, seen things he wished he hadn't, and lost friends along the way. The brothers listened intently, and a mutual respect deepened among them. They began to truly understand each other's past sorrows and present struggles. As the days grew longer and warmer, Tom introduced the brothers to the local community in small, careful steps. The local librarian, Mrs. Calloway, became a friendly face to the curious Dax and Jorrell. She helped them explore literature not just about space, but about Earth's cultures and histories. The community, initially wary, grew to accept the brothers, intrigued and somewhat enchanted by their gentle demeanor and eagerness to learn. In return, Dax and Jarrell shared glimpses of Lithorian technology, demonstrating small, harmless gadgets that produced light and heat without fire. Tom helped them understand the importance of keeping their more advanced technologies private, knowing the world wasn't quite ready for such revelations. This exchange of knowledge and culture enriched not just the lives of Dax and Jarrell, but also that of the entire community. Tom watched with pride as barriers broke down and understanding grew. Under his care, the brothers weren't just surviving, they were thriving, finding a new home on a planet light years away from their own. As the alien brothers, Dax and Jarrell, began to integrate more into their small Nebraska community, the idyllic peace of their new life was threatened by the very fact of their existence. Unbeknownst to Tom and the brothers, word of their unique situation had spread beyond the confines of local gossip reaching ears that were less than friendly. One evening, as Tom was teaching the brothers about Earth's constellations under the clear night sky, the tranquil atmosphere was shattered by the abrupt roar of engines. Black SUVs tore through the farm's gravel driveway, kicking up clouds of dust. Armed men in dark tactical gear poured out, encircling the farmhouse with chilling efficiency. Tom's military instincts kicked in immediately, 
He ushered Dax and Jarrell back towards the house, his mind racing through escape routes and defensive strategies. Stay down and follow my lead, he whispered sharply, a tone of command lacing his voice that the brothers had never heard before. Inside, Tom quickly retrieved his old service pistol from a locked safe. As he loaded it with steady hands, he explained the situation in low, urgent tones. These men are from the government. They're not here to chat. They know about you and they want to take you in for testing. We need to get out now. Using a hidden back door, the trio slipped into the dense cornfields, the stalks high and thick enough to provide cover. Tom led them in a crouch, moving quickly but carefully, every step calculated. The sounds of shouting and searching grew fainter as they put distance between themselves and the farmhouse. Once they reached the old barn at the far end of the property, Tom paused, assessing their next move. We'll head to the river. I have a small boat stashed there for emergencies. It's not fast, but it'll get us away from here. As they navigated the rough terrain in the dark, Dax and Jarrell struggled to keep up, not used to the physical demands of such an escape. Despite their advanced intellect and abilities, the raw fear of being hunted was new to them. Tom kept them moving with quiet words of encouragement, impressed by their determination. The chase did not go unnoticed by the local community. As the sound of helicopters thudded overhead, a few of Tom's neighbors noticed the commotion. Among them was Mrs. Calloway, the librarian, who, knowing something was terribly wrong, called the local sheriff, an old friend of Tom's. Meanwhile, at the river, Tom and the brothers reached the boat. As they pushed off into the slow current, Tom saw the beams of flashlights near the bank. They were close on their heels. With a grim set to his jaw, he steered the boat into the darkness of the river, hoping to lose their pursuers in the network of waterways. As the night deepened, so did the peril. But within the small boat as they drifted beneath the canopy of stars, a new resolve solidified among the trio. They were no longer just friends or a surrogate family. They were comrades bound by a shared struggle for freedom. The immediate danger had united them further, forging their bond in the fires of adversity. Tom, with his protective instincts fully engaged, was determined to keep the brothers safe. Dax and Jarrell, for their part, realized the depth of their attachment to Earth and to Tom. They were ready to fight for their right to stay, to live as free beings in this new world that was slowly becoming their home. With the river's dark waters silently cloaking their escape, Tom, Dax, and Joril maneuvered under the night sky. The only sounds the gentle lapping of water against the boat and the distant hum of searching helicopters. As dawn approached, they disembarked on a secluded bank, far from their initial location but not out of danger. Tom knew they needed a more sustainable plan. We can't keep running forever, he muttered, as he scanned a road map by the light of his fading flashlight. We need a place to lay low, at least until we can figure out a long-term solution. Dax, ever the quick learner, suggested, What about those places you showed us? The national parks? Could we hide there? Tom nodded slowly, considering the idea. Yes, the parks are vast and not heavily patrolled this time of year. It could work. He decided on a remote area of Yellowstone National Park known for its dense forests and minimal human traffic. It would provide them with the cover and isolation they needed. Their journey to Yellowstone was fraught with tension. Tom purchased an old nondescript van from a contact who thankfully didn't ask too many questions. He changed their appearance, cutting and dyeing the brothers' hair, giving them clothes that wouldn't stand out. They traveled mostly at night, staying at rundown motels or camping in secluded areas. Along the way, Tom taught the brothers how to blend in with humans, how to move without drawing attention, and how to stay vigilant. They learned to communicate discreetly using signals and coded language. Each lesson sharpened their senses and tightened their bond. In Yellowstone, they found a secluded cabin, long abandoned, that served as their temporary base. Here, the brothers experienced the raw beauty of Earth's nature firsthand. The majestic scenery and the freedom of the wilderness contrasted sharply with their reason for being there, adding a bittersweet edge to their days. As they adapted to their new transient lifestyle, they encountered occasional hikers and rangers, interactions that Tom used as teaching moments. Dax and Jarrell learned how to engage in simple, non-suspicious conversation, their accents explained away as foreign rather than extraterrestrial. However, the threat of capture was never far from their minds. 
Tom kept in touch with a few trusted contacts trying to gauge the extent of the government's search. What he learned wasn't reassuring. Their escape had only intensified the efforts to locate them, and their descriptions were circulating in federal databases. Despite the constant danger, this period of hiding deepened the trio's understanding of each other. The brothers saw Tom's relentless determination to protect them, recognizing the depths of his commitment. In return, they shared more of their own capabilities, revealing skills that could help in their survival, like Jorrell's ability to sense electrical signals, which could warn them of approaching vehicles or communication devices. One evening, as they sat by a fire outside the cabin, Tom looked at the brothers, their faces illuminated by the flickering flames. We've done well so far, but we're going to need a more permanent solution. This isn't a life for you boys, he said solemnly. Dax nodded, his voice steady. We know, Tom, and we're ready to do whatever it takes. Lethor may be our birthplace, but Earth is our home now. We'll fight to protect it and our place here. Tom, Dax, and Jorrell, now deeply entrenched in their hideaway within Yellowstone, faced the escalating pressures of a relentless manhunt. Their brief moments of peace were increasingly punctuated by the distant sounds of helicopters and the rare but unnerving encounters with drones that seemed to comb the more accessible areas of the park. Aware that they could no longer afford to stay in one place for too long, Tom intensified the brothers' training. He taught them advanced survival skills, how to navigate the rugged terrain without leaving a trace, and how to use the natural world as their shield against the technology used to hunt them. Everything can be a tool, Tom would say as he showed them how to use mud and leaves to camouflage their appearance, or how to create diversions with simple traps. And everything can be a weapon if you're clever enough. Dax, with his keen interest in technology, rigged up a small device that could intercept and scramble drone signals temporarily, giving them moments of invisibility. Jorill, with his heightened senses, served as their early warning system, detecting distant sounds and movements that would have gone unnoticed by human ears. One late afternoon, as they were crossing a less-traveled northern sector of the park, Jorrell suddenly froze, signaling them to halt. His face was tense as he whispered, Vehicles, several, coming fast. With no time to retreat, Tom quickly devised a plan. We split up. Dax, you take the left flank, use the scrambler. Jorrell, head right, find high ground, keep watch. I'll go straight, draw them if I have to. We meet back at the ridge by sundown. The brothers nodded, moving into position with a proficiency that would have made any military proud. Tom watched them go his heart swelling with pride and a pang of fear. They were no longer the frightened, uncertain youths who had crashed on his farm. They were capable, determined individuals ready to fight for their freedom. The confrontation that followed tested their skills to the limit. Dax managed to disable the first wave of drones, sending them crashing into the dense underbrush. Jorrell, from his vantage point, relayed positions of the approaching agents, allowing Tom to create ambush points and use the terrain to their advantage. It was a tense, harrowing hour that felt like an eternity. When they regrouped at the ridge, they were breathless, dirty, but unharmed. The agents had eventually retreated, underestimating the difficulty of capturing their elusive targets in such challenging terrain. That was too close, Tom said as they caught their breath, watching the sunset paint the sky in hues of fire and gold. They're getting smarter, and they're not going to stop. We need to think bigger if we're going to end this. The brothers agreed and they spent the night under the stars planning their next moves. It was clear that they needed allies and possibly a way to leverage their knowledge and skills to secure not just their safety, but their right to live freely on Earth. As the intensity of their situation escalated, Tom, Dax, and Jarrell found themselves pushed not just physically, but emotionally and mentally as well. They moved to a new hideout, an abandoned ranger station deep within the mountains, accessible only by a rugged trail obscured by overgrowth. Here, surrounded by the austere beauty of the wilderness, Tom decided it was time to reveal more about his own past, hoping to strengthen their resolve and deepen their trust. One evening, as they gathered around a crackling fire, Tom looked across at the brothers, his expression serious. I haven't been completely honest with you about why I know how to do all this, he began, gesturing to their surroundings. Before I was a farmer, I worked in covert operations. I was trained to survive, evade, and fight, just like we're doing now. Dax and Jorrell listened intently, sensing the importance of his words. Tom continued. I lost my family in an accident, 
and after that I left everything behind, including my identity. I chose a quiet life, to forget and to heal. When I found you, it wasn't just about helping two lost kids. It was about filling a void in my own life. The brothers absorbed this in silence, the crackle of the fire punctuating the heavy air. Jarrell, the more empathetic of the two, reached out a hand to Tom. We are your family now, he said softly, his voice carrying a weight of understanding and acceptance. Dax nodded in agreement. And you have given us a home. We share more than just a fight. We share a life. That night they shared more stories, with Tom recounting missions that had taken him to dangerous locales around the world, and the brothers speaking of their parents' scientific endeavors. It was a mutual exchange of vulnerabilities and strengths, forging an even stronger bond between them. Their conversation also turned strategic. Tom knew they couldn't run forever. They needed to confront the forces after them in a way that could secure a peaceful future. He proposed leveraging the advanced Lithorian technology and knowledge that Dax and Joral possessed as a bargaining chip. We need to show them that you're more valuable free than as captives, Tom explained. If we can prove that your intentions are peaceful and that you can contribute positively to humanity, perhaps we can negotiate your right to stay. Dax and Joral were initially hesitant, fearful of further exploitation. But Tom reassured them, we'll do it on our terms. We'll control how much information we share and who we trust. It's a risk, but it might be our only chance to end this on a positive note. The plan was risky, but it provided a glimmer of hope. The following days were spent preparing. Tom reached out to a few trusted contacts from his past, individuals who had left the covert world for careers in diplomacy and law. Meanwhile, Dax and Jarrell compiled data and information about their technology that could be used as a demonstration, carefully selecting non-invasive tools and applications that could benefit human society without posing a threat. As they planned, the brothers trained with even greater determination, knowing that the stakes were higher than ever. They were no longer just surviving, they were fighting for a chance to live openly, to be recognized not as aliens, but as beings with rights and aspirations.